You weren't always able to buy these beautiful African cichlids in America. The story of how they got here in this FinCast. It, um, it's pretty phenomenal food, and we have customers that come in that they're asking for a good food that'll bring out the color of the fish, um, growth of the fish. We tell them we use extreme. Hi everybody, John here with another FinCast. Regular viewers of FinCasters know that I typically put out a new FinCast every Sunday and this week I'm a day late but I have a good excuse because my oldest son, Jonathan, got married to his longtime girlfriend and fiance, Beth, this weekend. It was a beautiful wedding on the roof of Center in the Square in Roanoke, Virginia, but needless to say I just wasn't able to devote my normal amount of attention to the channel during the past week. Be that as it may, I want to continue with my series of interviews and discussions with Rick Biro, one of the pioneers in the African cichlid aspect of our hobby. Rick has appeared in several FinCasts, and you'll be seeing more of him throughout the year, but he operates a major tropical fish farm in Florida. He supplies the aquarium trade with a high percentage of the African cichlids that you can buy in stores. Uh, and this is where they developed the extreme aquatic food, which is just amazing for bringing out the colors of the cichlids and other fish as well, for that matter. And I'll be talking more about how they develop the food. That's coming up in a future FinCast. But the more I interview and talk with Rick, the more I'm amazed that I'm actually talking to the guy, or certainly one of the guys, who brought African cichlids to the United States. Rick and his brother had just graduated from college and they decided to take a trip to Africa. Here's Rick. Um, my brother and I were heavy duty hobbyists in 1970. Both of us were attending Florida State University and we had, each of us had multiple tanks in our apartments and we just couldn't get um, anything but the most common of African. So as on a lark, uh, we said, well, why don't we bring in a, a shipment? So we brought, we formed a company, called ourselves Tally Imports, a so name off Tallahassee and Imports. And we brought in our first uh, shipment of uh, Malawi fish, which was about a 12 box shipment from Peter Davies, who was one of the first original um, shippers of uh, African cichlids. We did that uh, in Tallahassee for about uh, six months. Um, our, ho our homes became basically uh, 80, 90 tanks and we lived on couches. At that point we moved to a um, warehouse and when we graduated we, we couldn't get the variety we wanted so as, when we graduated we took off for Malawi in 1973 and we flew over there with anticipation of talking Mr. Davies into sh catching more of the lake and we were going to uh, start bringing in more fish. When we, were got, when we got there um, we found out that he wasn't really interested in moving into other parts like we were very disillusioned and um, we're leaving town and we were in Blantyre and we happened to pass a fish shop and it had, um, it was funny, we thought it was kind of funny that he had goldfish and mollies and swordtails here in Malawi, Africa. So we walked in and, in the, and, and looking around he, had, he did have all these common fish which we weren't interested in but in the back of the shop he had some of the most beautiful Malawi cichlids and we, we just actually, our, our jaws dropped. But it was a man who's never, um, his name was Eric Fleet, he had never shipped before, but he owned a permit for the entire lake. So it was like, we, we found this guy, we started working with him, started talking to him, and over the next two or three trips back to Africa, we taught him how to ship fish, and we started bringing in multiple different areas of the lake. We were traveled uh, to Lacoma Island, started that uh, island up, we ch traveled up the Sherry River and started bringing in uh, uh, commercial quantities of lineae and morii and hap compressiceps and all the fish we had soon picked up another shipper Richard Furzer in the Mozambique side and we were bringing in um, red zebras white zebras we were naming all these fishes we were bringing them in not scientific just fun names for us and then we also ended up with Stuart Grant who ended up being the the biggest supplier as the years went by but this is how we got our start um, to a 20 year old and 21 year old guy sitting in Africa out of the clear blue. So 
that's a little bit of my interview with Rick, and I thought I asked him about this on camera, but he told me the story about the day they arrived in Africa and rented a small car at the airport, couldn't find a hotel, it was late, so they parked next to a body of water, or it was a river, a pond, a lake, something like that. And unbeknownst to them, hippos live in that body of water. And if you don't know, hippos can be dangerous. And when the locals found out where they had stayed that night, they told them they were lucky to be alive because hippos have a tendency to, uh, I guess, be aggressive. And that small car would have been no match for the hippos had they decided that they didn't like that small car parked next to the body of water. But be that as it may, uh, Rick and Andy survived, but it's just a great story. And so when I talk about cichlid adventures, that's kind of uh, what I was thinking. This, this was not easy to do back in the day. It's not easy to be a pioneer. So we'll have more with Rick coming up. Of course, we've already done several interviews, and he's a great resource on how to take care of cichlids. So please kick, uh, please click the button, and uh, you can take a look at some of the other interviews that, uh, that I've done with Rick, and, and we'll have more cichlid adventures in the future. By the way, I just wanted to say congratulations once again to Beth and my son Jonathan, the newlyweds. And by all means, if you haven't subscribed to FinCasters, please hit the subscribe button now, and I'll see you in the next FinCast.